Hey everyone, welcome back to Susan Sunday Spotlight. This week I have another new game for you. It is a number sense slash place value game. Um, it's a game that I actually have had included in my numbers to 120 unit for a few years now. So I wanted to share this one with you because it's really easy to implement. And it's a game that you will teach your students after you've already introduced them to the 120 chart. So they should be pretty familiar with different patterns that you see on the 120 chart. Numbers get bigger as they go down, smaller as you go up. Um, you know, all the tens and the ones places are the same. Um, different things like that. So after students are already familiar with that, this is a great game and activity to get them used to the tens and the ones place. So I'm going to show you how to play, but before I do, make sure you hit subscribe on my channel and hit the bell. That way you're notified of every new video that I upload. So let's dive in. Arrow paths. Okay, so all you're gonna need to play arrow paths is your own 120 chart. And then I like to play it, like I said, whole group first, so that way students can really see um, how to play the game and kind of understand the meaning behind the arrows. And then I go into it with small groups, and then once students get a good understanding of how to play, they can make up their own arrow paths and play with a partner. So I'm going to go ahead and use my small group chart. This is one that actually has a bunch of different tiles here. These all pop off, so it is meant to lay flat. So if they fall out, I apologize. Um, but I like this one too when I'm working with small group because it came with these little pink and green tiles that you can kind of highlight the numbers um, as you're working on them. So an arrow path looks like this. I wrote it back here on the board if you can see. You can pick any number from the 120 chart and then you go ahead and write, I usually do three to four arrows to start off um, and then a circle at the end is where they write their answer. So on this arrow path it says 46, right arrow, right arrow, down arrow, down arrow. And students are trying to figure out, they're trying to follow that arrow path to figure out what number they landed on when they started on 46. So all they will do is I will have them use their little thing. You can have them use a, you know, any sort of clear bead or just their finger is fine. And first they're going to have to go ahead and identify the number 46 on the board. And then they will go right arrow 47, right arrow 48, and then down arrow, down arrow, one and two. And the number that they've landed on is 68. So it's pretty simple when you put it that way, but the goal is to get students to understand that every time they're, see a, they're seeing a right arrow, it's plus one. And every time they see a left arrow, it is minus one. Or when they're going down, it's plus 10, or if they're going up, it's minus 10. Um, as students continue to play this game, the goal in the end game is that they eventually can do it without the 120 chart. So as they begin, they are creating their own little arrow paths. They'll start here. They're saying, oh, this number's getting bigger by one. Getting bigger by one. Which is again why I like to play it whole group first. I find that when I just start it in small groups or just have students create their own without really explaining it, they're just following the arrows and finding the number, which is great. They're finding their way around a 120 chart, but they're not fully understanding that they are taking away a 10 and a one or adding a 10 and a one each time. So once students have found out that the answer is actually 68, they can go ahead and write it in the circle. I like to use this game as a warm up at the beginning of our math block, and students can take turns. I usually write three or four of these on the board. And again, it's a game that I like because even though there's only one student writing the answer down, everyone is participating because everyone can go ahead and find out where that number is, follow the arrows to get to the next one. Um, different ways you can differentiate this game. Like I said, the goal is that they will eventually be able to do this without a 120 chart. So they're going to have to really visually see um, in their heads that, you know, you start at 68. And if I'm going left, I'm going back to 67. I'm actually going down one. If I'm going up, I'm going down 10. Students really like this game because they can add lots of different arrows as they get used to it. And the students like trying to trick their partner. Um, another way I like to do it is we actually start from the back. So students will start with 68, let's say, and then they can try to work their way backwards to find out what number they also would have been on. Other ways I've played before is I will actually pick a goal number, and I'll do this for the whole class. So I'll say, okay, everybody, I want you to get to number 54. How can you get there? And students will each make up their own arrow path trying to get to the number 54 as their end goal. So yeah, when doing it whole group, like I said, I'll usually write three or four up on the board and students will come up to the big 120 chart and show us how they did it. 
And again, I really emphasize that as they are moving over, I have them not only say the number that they're moving to, but identify whether they are adding or taking away a 10 or a 1. And then I will move into small group. I'll do something like this so I can really monitor the students and make sure that they're getting that understanding of the numbers as they move them. And then they go into independently and I will just have them use a whiteboard and a 120 chart with a partner and they will take turns giving each other arrow paths. Something else I like students to notice as they continue to play this game is that sometimes the arrows will cancel themselves out. So for instance, if I had written here 46 right arrow, left arrow, let's pretend this was changed. Eventually, after playing this game for a little bit, students will realize, oh, wait a second, if I go right one and then I go left one, I'm actually staying at 46. I'm not moving. So especially when those arrow paths start getting longer and trickier, students will be able to see a right arrow and a left arrow and they will cross them out. So students do have to go in order. So they just because there's a right arrow here and then a left arrow way down the line doesn't mean that they will automatically cancel out. It's only when they go right next to each other, which again, students will realize. Same with an up arrow and then a down arrow. If they are right next to each other, they're actually canceling each other out. Just little things that they'll notice as they continue to play. Yeah, this chart here, it's a, um, I think it's by Learning Resources. These are all tiles, like I said, so the bottom ones have already fallen out because you're not supposed to hold it this way. Um, I like it. It's double-sided. I'll try to show you the back without them falling. So um, before we would play a game like this, I would have students first start on this one where they can actually see the numbers. So they choose the tile, see where they go, and fill it up. And then I would have them kind of move to the next stage. I could put this at a small group center, and they would go ahead and fill in these tiles. I also like that too because I, once I fill in this side, I can just take out some of the tiles and they'd have to figure out, you know, what's missing from the 120 chart. But yeah, like I said, I also like it because it has these little tiles here for them to highlight the numbers that they're working on and show me that arrow path. So there you go. That is how you play arrow paths. Like I said, it's just a simple game. You can play whole group, small group, and then eventually with partners so students can gain a better understanding of place value and number sense. If you like this game, make sure you go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please hit subscribe and click that bell. So that way you're notified of a new video every single week. See you next week. Bye. Hey, everyone. That's an intense wave. Blah.